Adolf Hitler? You may have read about Hitler in books or on the internet. We all know the story of the Holocaust, the concentration camps, and the gas chambers. In Mein Kampf, we will learn about who Hitler was from his perspective. You will learn about his childhood, his dreams, and his passions. You will learn about his thoughts and the ideas which led him to be one of the most powerful men in history. How was Hitler able to mobilize thousands of soldiers according to his beliefs? Some people may say that he was a madman. Others may say that he was a genius or that he was charismatic. In this book, you will know how Hitler views himself. You will know about the identity of the man who changed the lives of millions of people all over the world. In the house of my parents, I was born in the town of Bernau, which is along the German and Austrian border. I consider it fate. For it is the duty of my generation to reunite these two German states at all costs. Austria must return to Germany because one blood needs only one Reich. Germany must embrace all its sons in one single state. My parents are Bavarian by blood, but technically, they are Austrian. My father is a devoted civil servant. He is a customs official. My mother is a housewife. I have little memory of her now because my father was soon reassigned to Passau. That is already inside the German proper. My father was the son of a poor farmer. That's why he learned at a young age how to survive on his own. Father was hard working. He would not rest even when he was old. He ran away from home when he was 13 years old. Father went to Vienna, where he learned to earn his own money. He made his way to the city. At 17 years old, he took the civil service examination and passed. Father reached his dream. He served the government throughout the years. He made a vow to himself when he was a poor boy. Father swore that he would never return to his hometown until he had proved himself. And he did. When father retired at age 56, he couldn't sit at home idle. He bought a farm and took care of it himself. It was on that farm where I spent my childhood. I was brash as a boy. I always wanted to play and run around outside. My mother hoped that I would stay at home more. My public speaking skills were developed early on. I often won arguments with my classmates. Father had a library. I became fond of the books on the Franco-German War in 1870-1871. They were my favorite. I indulged myself in the detailed illustrations. Since then, I've had a fascination with anything related to war, the military of soldiers. My father wanted me to be a civil servant like him. We argued about which high school I should attend. He was firm and determined about his decision. He wanted me to pursue the same path as he did. The more he pushed me into being a civil servant, the more I rejected it. I told him one day that I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a painter. I liked to draw, and I wanted to improve my skills. That was the career path I wanted to take. But father got angry. He told me that for as long as he lived, I would never be an artist. My father was stubborn. And so am I. He enrolled me in real school. I did well on the subjects which interested me. I sabotaged the other subjects, which I considered unimportant. My report cards would have excellent on some parts and inadequate on others. But I can say that history and geography were my favorite subjects. I led the class when it came to those two. 
but something transformed me from being a carefree boy to a being mindful young man. My father died when I was 13. Two years after, my mother followed. I had dreams of becoming an artist and going to the academy, but my fate had changed. I was orphaned, and naturally, I had to make a living. I went to Vienna as my father did 50 years ago. I also wanted to prove that I could become something. I am sure that I was not to become a civil servant. Years of study and suffering in Vienna I took the entrance examination for the Academy's School of Painting. I thought that my paintings were excellent, but I was terribly rejected. It was like a lightning flash to me. Homer was my constant companion. I worked as a laborer and a small painter. My earnings only covered my next meal. In my free time, I read books. If I wanted to buy a book, I had to endure my hunger. Nevertheless, books were my passion. I learned as much as I could. My life in the city opened my eyes to two things, Jews and Marxists. I do not understand why they should exist among the German people. The more I see them, the more convinced I am that they are menaces. The Jews call themselves chosen people. But they are not clean on the outside as well as on the inside. I recognize a Jew when I see one. They flock to the streets of Vienna. They wear unclean clothes. They have a distinct smell. These kaftan wearers made me sick to my stomach. I learned about Jewish culture. I became familiar with their literature, art, and theater. I came to conclude that this was pestilence. The German people were infected with it. This was worse than the Black Plague of the Middle Ages. The Jews are spreading filth in humanity. Their literature is trash. Their art reflects low intellect. Their theater shows stupidity. And yet, these chosen people are growing in number. I worked as a building worker. I was involved in arguments with the trade unions. These union leaders are claiming to be champions of the employees, but they were only concerned with making themselves rich. I soon realized that these union leaders, these social democrats, were all Jews. I read any social democrat pamphlet I could find. The authors and publishers had surnames like Ellenbogen, David, Adler, Austerlitz, and others. They spread the teachings of Marxism. I came to realize that these Marxists and these street agitators were all Jews. I was repulsed. I was disgusted. How dare these chosen people pollute the city with the ideas of Karl Marx? How dare the Jews encourage others to refuse work and fight the government? I believe in the privilege of strength and power. I believe in the value of personality. I believe that some people are destined to lead, and some are destined to follow. This brings order to the world. Marxism wants to destroy this order. It is destructive. It leads to chaos. Marxism wants to dispose of the privileged and give power to the masses. It blurs the importance of culture, race, and nationality. Marxism is the way by which the Jews aim to dominate the world. These chosen people want to be superior to all of humanity. Hence, I am defending myself and my people from the Jews. In this sense, I conclude that I am acting in the will of God. Munich in 1912, I moved from Vienna to Munich. The time before the war was the happiest time of my life. Munich is very different. The large city was filled with German art. I cannot help but bask in the beauty of this place. Munich was better than any place I knew. I felt love and connection with it. The dialect was closer to my home. I also came to interact with Bavarians like myself. It reminded me of my parents and my childhood. In Munich, there was a marriage between power and art. Years of study and suffering in Vienna I took the entrance examination for the Academy's School of Painting. I thought that my paintings were excellent but I was terribly rejected. It was like a lightning flash to me. Homer was my constant companion. 
I worked as a laborer and a small painter. My earnings only covered my next meal. In my free time, I read books. If I wanted to buy a book, I had to endure my hunger. Nevertheless, books were my passion. I learned as much as I could. My life in the city opened my eyes to two things, Jews and Marxists. I do not understand why they should exist among the German people. The more I see them, the more convinced I am that they are menaces. The Jews call themselves chosen people. But they are not clean on the outside as well as on the inside. I recognize a Jew when I see one. They flock to the streets of Vienna. They wear unclean clothes. They have a distinct smell. These kaftan wearers made me sick to my stomach. I learned about Jewish culture. I became familiar with their literature, art, and theater. I came to conclude that this was pestilence. The German people were infected with it. This was worse than the Black Plague of the Middle Ages. The Jews are spreading filth and humanity. Their literature is trash. Their art reflects low intellect. Their theater shows stupidity. And yet, these chosen people are growing in number. I worked as a building worker. I was involved in arguments with the trade unions. These union leaders are claiming to be champions of the employees, but they were only concerned with making themselves rich. I soon realized that these union leaders, these social democrats, were all Jews. I read any social democrat pamphlet I could find. The authors and publishers had surnames like Ellen Bogan, David, Adler, Austerlitz, and others. They spread the teachings of Marxism. I came to realize that these Marxists and these street agitators were all Jews. I was repulsed. I was disgusted. How dare these chosen people pollute the city with the ideas of Karl Marx? How dare the Jews encourage others to refuse work and fight the government? I believe in the privilege of strength and power. I believe in the value of personality. I believe that some people are destined to lead, and some are destined to follow. This brings order to the world. Marxism wants to destroy this order. It is destructive. It leads to chaos. Marxism wants to dispose of the privileged and give power to the masses. It blurs the importance of culture, race, and nationality. Marxism is the way by which the Jews aim to dominate the world. These chosen people want to be superior to all of humanity. Hence, I am defending myself and my people from the Jews. In this sense, I conclude that I am acting in the will of God. Munich in 1912, I moved from Vienna to Munich. The time before the war was the happiest time of my life. Munich is very different. The large city was filled with German art. I cannot help but bask in the beauty of this place. Munich was better than any place I knew. I felt love and connection with it. The dialect was closer to my home. I also came to interact with Bavarians like myself. It reminded me of my parents and my childhood. In Munich, there was a marriage between power and art. Years of study and suffering in Vienna I took the entrance examination for the Academy School of Painting. I thought that my paintings were excellent, but I was terribly rejected. It was like a lightning flash to me. Homer was my constant companion. I worked as a laborer and a small painter. My earnings only covered my next meal. In my free time, I read books. If I wanted to buy a book, I had to endure my hunger. Nevertheless, books were my passion. I learned as much as I could. My life in the city opened my eyes to two things, Jews and Marxists. I do not understand why they should exist among the German people. The more I see them, the more convinced I am that they are menaces. The Jews call themselves chosen people. But they are not clean on the outside as well as on the inside. I recognize a Jew when I see one. They flock to the streets of Vienna. They wear unclean clothes. They have a distinct smell. 
These caftan wares made me sick to my stomach. I learned about Jewish culture. I became familiar with their literature, art, and theater. I came to conclude that this was pestilence. The German people were infected with it. This was worse than the Black Plague of the Middle Ages. The Jews are spreading filth in humanity. Their literature is trash. Their art reflects low intellect. Their theater shows stupidity. And yet, these chosen people are growing in number. I worked as a building worker. I was involved in arguments with the trade unions. These union leaders are claiming to be champions of the employees, but they were only concerned with making themselves rich. I soon realized that these union leaders, these social democrats, were all Jews. I read any social democrat pamphlet I could find. The authors and publishers had surnames like Ellen Bogan, David, Adler, Austerlitz, and others. They spread the teachings of Marxism. I came to realize that these Marxists and these street agitators were all Jews. I was repulsed. I was disgusted. How dare these chosen people pollute the city with the ideas of Karl Marx? How dare the Jews encourage others to refuse work and fight the government? I believe in the privilege of strength and power. I believe in the value of personality. I believe that some people are destined to lead, and some are destined to follow. This brings order to the world. If Marxism wants to destroy this order, it is destructive. It leads to chaos. Marxism wants to dispose of the privileged and give power to the masses. It blurs the importance of culture, race, and nationality. Marxism is the way by which the Jews mean to dominate the world. These chosen people want to be superior to all of humanity. Hence, I am defending myself and my people from the Jews. In this sense, I conclude that I am acting in the will of God. Munich in 1912, I moved from Vienna to Munich. The time before the war was the happiest time of my life. Munich is very different. The large city was filled with German art. I cannot help but bask in the beauty of this place. Munich was better than any place I knew. I felt love and connection with it. The dialect was closer to my home. I also came to interact with Bavarians like myself. It reminded me of my parents in my childhood. In Munich, there was a marriage between power and art.
meets with a mouse that a stork meets with a stork. A wolf mates with a she-wolf. The crossbreed between different kinds results in weak offspring. Theoretically, if a shepherd dog mates with a sheep, the offspring will be stronger than the sheep but weaker than the dog. And so, nature ensures that there is purity of race. A dog mates with a dog, and a sheep mates with a sheep. By mating with the same species, nature maintains that a dog behaves like a dog and a sheep behaves like a sheep. You will immediately notice the differences among species when it comes to intelligence, strength, appearance, and others. And so, you will never have a shepherd dog that is submissive to the sheep. The same principle applies to humans. The superior Aryan race declined because it co-mingled with inferior people. North Americans are superior to Latin Americans because those in the North did not mate with colored people. North Americans trace their ancestry to Germany. They have maintained the strength and intelligence of the race because of purity. On the other hand, the Latin people in Central and South America co-mingled with the Aborigines. That is why the Latin blood is mixed with inferiority. You can see now how North America is more powerful than Latin America. That is all because of the purity of race. In fact, all great cultures decline because of blood and beauty. The creativity, vision, the talent of the superior race fade away because of mating with the inferior race. Humanity can be divided into three groups. The first is the founders of culture. The second is the bearers of culture. And the third is the destroyers of culture. Only Aryans can be considered in the first group. The Aryan race was the foundation of all civilization. They laid the building stones of human progress. The Aryans made plans, and the other people of the world are executing them. The achievements of America and Europe, whether in science or technology, originally came from the Aryan race. The right of emergency defense history repeated itself in 1918 and 1923. In 1918, the government chose not to end Marxism once and for all. Because of that, Germany paid the price. In 1923, the need to finish Marxism in Germany is greater than ever. These Marxists are nothing but murderers and traitors. Only the bourgeoisie can be fooled that the Marxists will now contribute to the national conscience. The Marxists and Jews are guilty of the deaths of 2 million soldiers who died in the war of 1918. And then, they made their way up to grab positions in the government. In World War I, the German soldiers and the German workers became victims of the Marxist leaders. These Marxists took power over the fatherland after the war. The sons of Germany sacrificed their lives only to be deceived by these treacherous Jews. These 15,000 Hebrew corruptors should have been killed by poison gas in 1914. If they had, the men on the battlefield would still be alive in 1918, and they would gain what they fought for. The lives of these workers and soldiers are certainly more valuable than these chosen people. But Germany's bourgeoisie let it happen. In the name of statesmanship, they let these traitors and swindlers rise to power. This was while millions of loyal men died on the battlefield. We should not commit the same mistake. In 1923, it was imperative that we eliminate these Marxists once and for all. A nation cannot be saved by prayers. Passive resistance can only last for a period of time. There is nothing like warfare to settle all disputes. The only truly effective way to reform any nation is by military means. In November 1923, the Republic ordered the National Socialist German Workers' Party to be dissolved. The members were commanded not to convene ever again. But as I ended this book in November 1926, 
the Nazi party rises stronger and louder than ever. No one can stop the correct ideas, the pure will, and the spirit of the Nazis. The value of personality and race is at our core. Germany will become the lord of the earth as soon as it is cured of racial poisoning. The Nazis will do whatever it takes to secure the people of the fatherland. Germany, Germany above all, above all in the world. Conclusion You learned about the mind of Adolf Hitler. You learned about his belief in the purity of race. You learned his strong views about Marxism. Hitler believed in action. He viewed diplomacy as cowardice. We are now in the digital age. People all over the world are connected more than ever. We are of different colors and cultures, but deep inside, we are all human. We all want to protect our loved ones. We all want to pursue our dreams and live in happiness. It is best to learn about empathy, to feel what others feel, and to see things from other people's perspectives. Which do you think leads to a better life, anger, and close-mindedness or kindness and understanding? Will you live a life of hate or compassion? The choice is yours.